Hey, great Tuesday morning to you, dear saints. Tuesday, the 8th, excuse me, Tuesday, the 11th of August. Great to have you with us today. We're going to make a little bit of change in our daily devotions. Nothing earth-shattering. What we're going to do is we're going to continue to follow through the book that we start. If you remember, yesterday we ended the book of Acts. Well, today we start again, if we follow the, um, the daily lectionary, we follow the book of 1 Corinthians. And I think it's a great practice for us just to read through the book. So what we'll do is we'll continue every day meeting, but our devotion will be in the book of 1 Corinthians. So I know that um, Dennis Mercer is doing devotions and a few others are as well. We'll see those in different places. But as for me, we will continue on through 1 Corinthians. So what I would encourage you to do is to sit down and read the book as a whole. Take Start at the beginning and just read it as a letter all the way through. And then we'll back up and take it individually and take these thoughts and these things that Paul is doing and we'll lay them out and we'll talk about them. How they affect us, how we live in them, and how that has affected the church in Corinth that Paul seeks to put back together again. Remember, as St. Paul writes to the church in Corinth, the church is a mess. They are not cooperating. They are not uh, working together as the body of Christ. They are trying to pull themselves apart, do their own thing, go their own way. They refuse to be united. So there are some great things in this book that Paul talks about. Of course, later on we get this wonderful exposition of the resurrection of Christ and of the Lord's Supper. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians this, this body that we have, and he really tries to give this idea of drawing the body together so it works as a whole. Those are some of the things that we'll take up as we jump into the book of 1 Corinthians. So today we begin, as we do always, remembering who we are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as we jump into this uh, reading for, for today, it is actually from August 7th, if you're following in the daily lectionary, the psalm for today, Psalm 144. O Lord, what is man that you regard him, or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Flash forth the lightning and, and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the mighty waters and from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O Lord, upon the ten-stringed harp. I will play to you who gives victory to kings, who rescues David, his servant, from this cruel world. The psalm today, again, he draws us back forward, and, and we have to almost scratch our head in wonder. Lord, why do you have regard for me, your lowly servant who struggles with all these things? But what we see, in, especially at the beginning of 1 Corinthians, is God doesn't take what the world would think as wisdom. God, in foolishness, at least a foolishness appearing to us, God works in our world. He uses the small and the, the things that aren't to put aside the mighty and their beliefs. St. Paul, in the letter to the church in Corinth, his first letter to the church in Corinth, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. 
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is this, each of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized into my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are being called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Paul starts off like he usually does in a book. He starts off with these wonderful greetings, a great doxology. He brings all of these things, this thanksgiving to our Lord as he starts talking about this church. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. He starts off that way. But he reminds them right up front that they are sanctified. He says, to the, church that God, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. He reminds us of who we are. Sanctified means holy, means set apart for a holy purpose. And you and I are sanctified. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the waters of holy baptism, we were sanctified and brought into the kingdom. And he reminds us, he starts us with that grace. He starts us as his people. What a wonderful way to start any book, any sermon. Anytime we, we deal with problems or even in great joys with our brothers to be reminded that in Christ we are holy and sanctified. And then he moves down a little bit and he talks about that sanctification. He says, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. You see, when God gives us faith in the waters of baptism, it's saving faith. If that child would die right there, they are completely saved, sanctified, justified through Jesus' death on the cross. They are made holy by God giving them faith. Oftentimes we think that, that we're baptized into the kingdom, we're given faith, but we have to keep working to make our faith stronger, to do all of these things. But remember again, dear saints, who is driving the verbs and who is doing the doing? Are you saving yourself? 
Are you, by knowledge and wisdom, growing so that you will be saved? Or, has God sanctified you? Has God made you holy? Has God given you complete and saving faith? And as you study God's word, he matures your understanding so that you see it even more fully, so that you understand it and trust in it even more. Your faith is solid and saving. You are sanctified by Christ. And as we study and grow through his Holy Spirit, he gives us a better understanding of these things. Well, Paul jumps right into the divisions at hand. He lays his thesis out right at the beginning of what he sees is going on in the church. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there are no divisions among you. Paul wants this church to be united in mind. But they're not. There are divisions. They follow this person or that person. Some follow Paul. Some follow Apollos. Some follow Cephas. Some follow Christ. And Paul says that cannot be. There is a cult of personalities going on here. And this is so easy to fall into. A new pastor moves into the area and he's flamboyant and strong. He does all of these great things. He's an eloquent speaker. And suddenly what happens? People begin to go to that pastor, to that church, to that place because of all of the great flashy things that are going on. And what Paul brings us back to That we're not saved by Paul, we're not saved by Apollos, we're not saved by Cephas. He brings them back to that we are followers of Christ and Christ alone. It's easy to get caught up in the trap of personalities. It's easy to think because my church, my pastor uh, doesn't do this or he struggles when he preaches or he struggles when he reads that suddenly now if I go to somebody else, then things will be better. If your pastor is faithfully preaching to you God's word, even if he's monotone and reads every word, you are far better than going to someone who is flashy and eloquent who will lead you away from God's word and weaken your faith. You see, our Lord gets to that here at the beginning of this book when he talks about how God saves us. He saves us by what we would consider folly. What we consider wise, what we consider great would be a pastor that is just absolutely eloquent. A church that is on the cutting edge of everything and has the best of everything. And how does God save us? He saves us through the preaching of his word, through ordinary, broken men with clay feet, And things that they're good at and things that they don't do very well. Because it's his word that saves us. Not your pastor. Not the programs of your church. It's the preaching of God's word into your ear where God works righteousness and holiness. Where he drives you to your sin so that you see it and repent and and cling to his grace even more knowing that you are saved by Christ and Christ alone. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. We, as the Lutheran church, we are criticized often because it seems like all you guys do is preach the cross in Jesus and baptism. Yep, that's it. That's what we do. It's not new. It's not flashy. It's not cutting edge. But it's salvation, and it's tried, and it's true. And this is the command that our Lord has given to us, faithful pastors, to preach to you, dear child of God, Christ crucified for you. That's enough. Because in the midst of that Christ crucified for you is your baptism, your identity, your promise that your Lord goes with you wherever you go, that whatever happens in this world will never take you out of his hand. And at the end of your life, dear child, no matter how it looks from earthly standards, bathed in the waters of baptism and connected by faith, you are sanctified and you will be saved. 
That's where Paul's driving the church. Back to these gifts that our Lord has given to us. We're saved by Christ alone. You, dear child, are saved and forgiven today by Christ alone. Go with that great joy. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our catechetical review for today takes us to the ninth commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. Our confession today, as always, a bright and bold confession in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe, that I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks that you have restored to health your servants, especially those who are struggling with any effects from the coronavirus, those who are finding treatment for cancer and other diseases. We thank you, Father, for this blessing, and we praise your name. Grant that they might continue joyfully through the days of their life that you have given them, that they might share in the eternal glory of our Savior Jesus Christ, and that they might share their joy with all whom they know. In the name of Jesus, amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, go in the, the power and the promise of Christ crucified being preached to you this day. Go in his peace. <laughs>